Welcome to the coming apocalypse. Evangelist and pastor Paul Bagley will take you on a journey into the end times prophecy. He'll examine current world events and explain how they relate to the end times. For decades, Pastor Bagley has provided people all over the world with an understanding of today's world events from a biblical perspective. Now here's your host, Pastor Paul Bagley. Analysis of today's headlines and how Bible prophecy is unfolding what? before your very eye. Please welcome now your host, Pastor Paul Bagley. <laughs> Are you serious? You picked the right day to watch this broadcast. You picked the right archive. Are you serious? Have you lost your mind? No, you haven't. Planet X is real. Confirmed by NASA late last night. I find this strange. Now, they don't say that exactly. NASA says, NASA admits the mysterious planet number nine is real okay planet number nine i'm gonna t this is and then and, but while they're doing this the european space observatory made that announcement that we were telling you about on friday that they were going to make an announcement <clears throat> at 10 a.m this morning let me get some water i'm just uh i'm, I'm just i'm just a little bit uh, excited about this information because all of the hatred, all of the, the negativity, all of the haters who've been saying, Begley, you and your five waves of energy and your Planet X Nibiru. Look, <laughs> I've just been reporting what's been, <clears throat> been reported, <clears throat> excuse me, by a lot of folks that are spotting stuff that are, that, uh, look, this information's been going. NASA is the one that said that there was a Planet X in 19. 85. It was them that they're the ones that said it. They even put a Nibiru project together for seven years. An entire team of scientists studying Nibiru or planet number planet X. But when the lead scientist died mysteriously in 92, they stopped talking about it and never spoke about it again until December of 2015 when the Chilean astronomers at that observatory way up in the mountains of Chile uh, they went and they said, well, look, we have spotted planet X. We have spotted planet X and it is in the constellation of Orion. That's where they saw it, which that got me digging in the word of God in the book of Job. When God even says to Job in Job 38, when he's telling Job, Job, where were you at when I laid the foundation of the world? When I was walking on the depths of the, on the, on the bottom of the ocean, where were you, Job? Can you loose the bands of Orion? And, the, and, and, this, and, and do you understand the sweet mysteries of Pleiades and the Maseroth? Do you understand it? In other words, do you understand the constellations, Job? So don't get mad, Job. Don't question me for I am God and I love you. And I know you're going through a rough time, but don't ever lose faith in me. Even if you're going through a rough time, Job, because I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. Jesus said, I'll go with you all the way, even to the end of the world. All right, I got, I got to turn the chat room on over at uh, YouTube. I'm just so uh, pumped up right here that I forgot to turn it on. So give me one second. I mean, are you serious? What a show. Russ Dizdar is going to be here to talk about the high satanic occult days of October. And we're in them right now. We need to understand what that means and what can we do as prayer warriors to offset it. Is, uh, are we, is the chat room open now? Over at uh, YouTube. Why am I having a... Oh, there it is. Okay. My bad. Forgive me, guys. Okay, forgive me. I'm so excited. I just can't hide it. And then put it all together, folks. We got the sun turning blood red in England. At midday, are you serious yesterday? Signs in the heavens everywhere. And now also while, while NASA is confirming for real that planet number nine, which is the same thing as planet X, for some reason they didn't want to come back out and call it planet X again. So they called it planet number nine because they don't want to be part of this conspiracy theory. But they're the ones that started it. They're the ones said they saw it. Now they're confirming last night that Planet X is real. 
They've named it planet number nine. And while that's going on, you need to understand that the uh, European Space uh, Organization, Observatory, excuse me, has confirmed the gravitational waves. The five waves of energy are caused by a neutron star collision. And that has offered, this is the new source of these gravitational waves. So when be, so whenever uh, we, we were studying these along with our friend Mike from around the world, remember when he brought this out five, four years ago, four years ago, he said, Paul, there are five waves of energy. And I kept saying, well, what's the source and what's the source and how does it happen and what's causing it? And he did confirm in a conversation that Planet X was real. He called it a binary system of some sort, but he also said there was waves of energy. Well, now what we're getting from the European Space Organization and that these waves of energy are being formed from a neutron star collision deep, deep, deep into the cosmos. And that collision has created these waves of energy, which we have just had wave number two earlier this year. And uh, we're still experiencing it, which is a reason why we think we're having a, a, some movement of a pole shift. And there's a lot going on in the sun. Why is the sun so uh, radically, I mean, so, you know, those two massive solar flares we had not long after the solar eclipse. There's all kinds of signs up there, folks, exactly what Jesus said would happen in the last days. But he's not the only one that said it. Jesus is not the only one that prophesied it. You can go to the book of Joel, and Joel tells us in Joel 2 and in Joel 3. In Joel 2, I'll read this, and then I'll let Max read Joel 3. But here's what Joel said in Joel 3, in Joel 2. Joel wanted us to know that there would be an end-time harvest, an outpouring of the power of God in the last days, and there would be apocalyptic signs happening simultaneously and this would let you know you're in the end times here's what joel said in joel 2 chapter tw joel chapter 2 verse 28 and it shall come to pass afterward that i will pour out my spirit upon all flesh your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams your young men shall see visions and also upon the servants and upon the handmaidens in those days will i pour out my spirit and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. As the Lord has said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Wow! Let's bring Max in right now to read uh, the next chapter of Joel, Joel 3. Max, bring the word from the King James Version of the Bible. Joel 3. For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations, and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations, and parted my land. And they have cast lots for my people, and have given a boy for an harlot, and sold a girl for wine, that they might drink. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre, and Zidon, and all the coasts of Palestine? Will ye render me a recompense? And if ye recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? Because ye have taken my silver and my gold, and have carried into your temples my goodly, pleasant things. The children also of Judah, and the children of Jerusalem, have ye sold unto the Grecians, that ye might remove them far from their border. Behold, I will raise them out of the place whither ye have sold them, and will return your recompense upon your own head. And I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Judah, and they shall sell them to the Sabaeans, 
to a people far off, for the Lord hath spoken it. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Wow! Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, for the press is full, the vats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. But the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened. What? And the stars shall withdraw their shining. What? The Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So shall ye know that I am the Lord your God dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no strangers pass through her any more. And it shall come to pass in that day that the mountain shall drop down new wine, and the hills shall flow with milk, and all the rivers of Judah shall flow with waters, and a fountain shall come forth of the house of the Lord, and shall water the valley of Shittim. Egypt shall be a desolation, and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness, for the violence against the children of Judah, because they have shed innocent blood in their land. But Judah shall dwell forever, and Jerusalem from generation to generation. For I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed, but the Lord dwelleth in Zion. Powerful, powerful scripture. Thank you, Max, for reading it. That was Joel 3. So we're giving you a little bit of Joel 2, a little bit of Joel 3. Notice the things that are going to be happening uh, Israel is seriously involved in the end time. That's why I say Israel is God's prophetic timepiece. And while that's going on, folks, while all these things are happening, uh, the sky, strange signs, fearful sights in the heavens. You can read that in the book of Luke 21. So there will be signs in the heavens and on the earth. And the earth's going to have earthquakes and listen to the things that are happening here. I'm going to tell you more about planet number nine and the gravitational waves in just a moment. I have two articles to read. Russ Dizdar will be joining us a little bit later in the broadcast to give us and explain the high satanic occult days of October. And of course, Russ Dizdar will be joining us as well this weekend in Louisiana. Listen, folks, we're living in a time like we've never seen before. But check this out. Earthquakes, yes, we have them. Uh, and expect more because the solar winds are blowing at 532 kilometers per second. And they're blowing off the sun at these enormous speeds with a gaping, gaping. I mean, it's magnanimous. The hole is so big on the atmosphere of the sun, it's like it's just insane. So with this wind roaring off the sun at high speeds, the pressure will build on the earth. You can look for earthquakes in the next 48 hours or so. And unfortunately, we may see something of a mega. Uh, now, good news is we haven't had a flare. We haven't had a solar flare. But praise God for that, because you would see something uh, break loose. But let's go to the earthquake map. As you can see, there's 22 earthquakes. There's the first one, 4.6 in blue there, Van Watatu region, very shallow. Then we had a 2.5 Lincoln, Montana. That's right. That's the Yellowstone danger zone. Also, we had the 3.9 in Chile, 4.3 in Russia, 3.4, 2.9, 2.7, 2.6, Soda Springs, Idaho. All of those earthquakes extremely shallow, and they're all in the Yellowstone Danger zone. Look at them. Boom, boom, boom. There they are. Boom, 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 boom. All in Soda Springs, Montana. 
Then we had a 3.4 over in Veronica, Oregon. That's over along that Cascadia fault line that keeps us on our on the edge of our seat. Followed by a 4.6 in Fiji, 4.3 in Argentina, 3.1, 2.6, 2.6, all in Alaska. Boom! We had a nice, powerful quake down there in Papua New Guinea of 5.0, a 4.8 in uh, Japan, 4.6. China had one right there. We had a 4.6 in Alaska and a 2.9 in Alaska, a 2.5 in Patterson, California right there. And we just had a 3.5 in Larson Bay, Alaska. 22 earthquakes in the last 24 hours, but it's Yellowstone. It's all about Yellowstone, the danger zone. It's all about Yellowstone with five, six earthquakes all over 2.5, between 2.5 and 3, shaking things up down there in Soda Springs, uh, Montana. Uh, 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 and it, is that right? Soda Springs, Wyoming, Idaho, excuse me. Soda Springs, Idaho, plus we had one in Lincoln, Montana. It's happening, folks. It's shaking. It's quaking. The devil's back is breaking. And my mind is aching. And the volcano's about ready to blow. But let's pray to God it doesn't happen right now. But what were the five waves of energy, that pressure that comes from the cosmos, what will it happen? Here's some good news. Uh, no solar flares. That's good. Only 15 fireballs in the sky breaking through the, ap <laughs> the Earth's atmosphere. No deep impacts. We'll take that. No asteroids going to go whizzing by our heads today. That's good. Uh, but we do have a lot of other things happening like Hurricane Ophelia. Ophelia, you're breaking my heart. You're starting to start the waves. Yes, they are. It's Ophelia. I Ireland feels the pain. I mean, listen, folks, this thing is huge. Now, it was a Category 3. Is It has come down to a, a Category 1, but it is deadly. Bart Begley told me just a few minutes ago over from the Crusader Journal that there were three people killed already. Just got word three people are dead in Ireland from Hurricane Ophelia as this hurricane has come ashore and is affecting Ireland. It will also affect Scotland, uh, excuse me, Wales. It's going to, and maybe Scotland, but it's certainly Wales is going to be affected. And so we're not done yet with the torrential rains, the winds, the potential mudslides, flash flooding, and other catastrophes from Hurricane Ophelia. What a horrible year for hurricanes, folks. What a terrible time we've had with these things. But the Bible said there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and the stress of nation with perplexity, the sea, the waves roaring and men's hearts have failed them for fear for looking after those things coming upon the earth for the power of heaven shall be shaken. Then shall the son of man, then shall they see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up, lift up your head, your redemption draweth nigh. I want to welcome all 1,148 of you joining us live at Paul Begley, at, uh, at just at YouTube, just at YouTube. I want to thank God for all of you listening live at Blog Talk Radio. And those of you watching on your iPhones and Androids and cell phones, uh, and uh, you got the Paul Begley Prophecy app downloaded on your phone. It's a free app. It's a free app. Say it again. It is a free app. And you can download it on your phone and it just keeps you in touch with uh, the work of the Lord and for the word of God. We just want to thank Mark of South Jersey for designing the app and getting it up there for us. Go to Google Play Store or go to the Apple Store, whichever store you need for your phone. Get it. Get it now. Amen. Also, I want to welcome all of you watching at New Live Stream. God bless all of you and uh, those of you watching us live on Roku satellite television plus everybody watching live at periscope there is some hope for the periscope and i want to thank everybody watching live at our website at paulbegleyprophecy.com i want to say hi to all of you moderators of course robo mom in california michelle up there in new hampshire 
uh, uh, Miss ZD's in Illinois, Vicky and Love and Obey are down there in Florida. And uh, plus, we just want to thank all of you. Uh, plus, I just want to say thank you to all the prayer warriors. Uh, Melissa does a great job in organizing that. And the prayer warriors uh, are just in there praying and praying. And I just happened to drop in there and just saw some powerful prayers were going up for me. And I really appreciate it. Uh, and Mrs. Jeep Girl, just before the broadcast came on. And a lot of times I'll drop over there and just see what's going on at the, my website. I'll just jump over there and look. And usually, I mean, there's always these prayer warriors in there praying day and night, 24 hours a day. Somebody's in there praying. They're available. If somebody comes in, needs prayer. Somebody got saved sometime in the night time. I don't know if that was in my chat room or Facebook or where that happened, but you know, people are just coming to Jesus Christ. What is the message? The message is salvation station. The message is you're in the last days and this end time church, God is blessing it, raising up a remnant of believers, pulling together a mighty force to bring in the harvest of the last days. The message is about Jesus Christ who is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The message is hope, the blessed hope that's coming one day for his bride, and we want to be ready when he comes. He said, watch him pray for an hour you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Jesus says, no man knows the day nor the hour. No, not the angels in heaven, not, not, the, not, not even himself, not the Son of God, but the Father only. Okay, so, but we know he's coming. We can see the signs everywhere. We know the Lord is coming. So pray for Ireland because they are being hit by a powerful hurricane, Ophelia. Three people are dead and, uh, and it could get worse. Also, don't stop praying for California. The uh, storms are still raging. Uh, the, it's just been unbelievable what they're, they've been going through there. Uh, last night they had a confirmed 42 people were dead. Um, and, uh, it's just really, really heartbreaking right now. What's been happening to California. Uh, our prayers go out for them. I mean, all over the place we're praying. Here's the story on storm Ophelia. If I can share it with you over at the crusader journal.com. Bart has an article three dead as storm Ophelia batters Ireland. And there's a picture he has right there on that. There you go. Thank you, Brock. And you can see that the winds are battering the coast as storm Ophelia, uh, comes ashore. The three people died as the now downgraded to a tropical storm. Ophelia battered Ireland's Southern coast today, knocking down trees, power lines, and whipping up 10 meter. That's 30 foot waves. What? Uh, over 360,000 homes and businesses are without electricity. Another 100,000 power outages are expected by nightfall as Ireland's electricity supply board is saying, describing it as an unprecedented event that would affect every part of the country for days. Around 170 airline flights from Ireland's two main airports out of Dublin and Shannon are canceled. Two people were killed in separate incidents when trees fell on their cars and a woman in her 50s in the southeast and a man on the east coast. Another man in his 30s died while trying to clear a fallen tree in an accident involving a chainsaw. And the storm downgraded from a hurricane overnight was the worst to hit Ireland in half a century. This is the worst storm they've had in 50 years. It made landfall this morning and the Irish nation Metro, uh, meteorological service is saying the winds were 190 kilometers per hour. In other words, 110 miles an hour. What? That is a hard hitting killing storm. Ophelia. And it did more than that, folks. I want you to know it turned. This is unbelievable. It turned the sun Literally, it turned the sun red, blood red. Uh, now, when people look at it on their cameras, it may look orange to some people. To your cam it all depends on the camera that can make a colors look differently. But it turned it blood red in midday. Shocking 
literally shocking the people of England as the, uh, the I mean, this is an unbelievable story here. Um, and let me just uh, read this for, look at that, that picture right there. Unbelievable, unbelievable. That's midday. The birds were confused. They thought it was the, it was the, you know, looked like the sun was supposed to be setting. That's something you might see at a sunset, not at midday in England. Really strange, really eerie. But they're saying that the reason the sun turned blood red in England at midday was because the hurricane Ophelia, um, grabbed some sand and dust out of Africa and pulled it up into the earth's atmosphere and turned the sun blood red. Now, the, and darkened the skies. It darkened the sun. It darkened the skies. Uh, incredibly dark. Almost, almost looked like night during midday. And that's why we read Joel 2 and 3 because it tells you in those last days that the sun will be darkened and the moon shall turn to blood. Okay, you're going to see, and there'd be distress among nations. Jesus said there would be all kinds of signs in the last days. We're seeing them, folks. We're seeing them. We're seeing them. And we're not only talking about uh, solar eclipses here. We're talking about strange phenomenons, fearful sights, and great signs in the heavens. And it's not just way out there in the cosmos. It's affecting the sun, the moon, and the stars. These were prophesied to happen in the last days. And so we are witnessing these unprecedented events, unprecedented earthquakes and hurricanes and, and, and tornadoes and volcanoes and uh, all, ki I mean, all kinds of apocalyptic things that are happening. And so we got to stay on our toes is what I'm saying. Uh, we've really got to stay alert on what's going on around the world. Uh, but, uh, and, and while we're talking about the sun being turned dark, there's more that's happening. Of course, there is the California wildfires. The last count I got was 42 people were dead. And uh, it will really, really help you understand, folks, uh, that uh, these wildfires burning out of control in the West Coast is the largest most, this is the most people killed from wildfires in California history. 42 are dead and it's expected to climb as 500 people are missing from the wildfires in California. Incredible infernos with wind blowing 50 miles an hour, fanning the flames and the fury of the inferno. And the people were running to flee, uh, the, the, the wrath if you will, this, I mean, literally, if you were living there, people went to bed at night in, in parts of Santa Rosa and other parts, and the, the flames, the fire was two, three miles away. They went to bed, and in the middle of the night, people were pounding on their windows and doors, screaming, get out! And when they looked out in the backyard, houses, their neighbor's houses engulfed in flames, the neighborhood literally uh, being consumed. And people had to jump out and just run and flee for their lives. And a lot of these folks are missing. About 500 people are missing. Now, some of them maybe made it to safety. We just haven't been able to track them down yet. But they know some folks didn't make it. The smoke, the ash, the heat, the flames, the confusion uh, that was taking place. It's, we have been praying and praying and praying. And I need everybody to pray for California. There's 16 wildfires out of control. They're still out of control. There's 10,000 firefighters fighting the flames, fighting the blaze, risking their own lives. There's helicopters and planes dropping water and chemicals and trying to uh, uh, slow the thing down. And while this is going on, folks, it's incredible. Over 5,700 homes burnt to the ground and businesses. And the chaos and the confusion and the carnage continues uh, here in there with the California wildfires. And we just are not going to stop praying till the last flame is put out. But boy, I tell you what, God is sending a message everywhere around the world. There's no question. I want to welcome all 1400 of you watching live 
at YouTube, plus the hundreds of you, thousands of you watching this by live or archive, wherever you are. You pick the right day to watch a broadcast because I've never seen so many things happening simultaneously. And then let's, we're going to be bringing Russ Dizdar from Shatter the Darkness. Uh, he'll be with us, Russ Dizdar. Talk, he's the leading, he's, I call him the leading exorcist of the evangelical community in the world if not the leading exorcist in the world. Certainly he deals with crime scenes, satanic occultural and satanic ritual abuse of people. He has went in on investigative situations. He has tracked down demons and devils and cast them out in Jesus name. And uh, we want to know about right now. We're in mid October, man. The zombie apocalypse is on. Okay. It's on. The demons. That's what this book, this is what my book zombie apocalypse and what my DVD Zombie apocalypse, that's what it means. It means the demons are being released from the, from the, from the pits of hell on the planet. Matter of fact, this DVD is, uh, contains shocking accounts of demonic possession, including voodoo, witch doctors, cannibalism, and an exclusive interview with L.A. Marzulli and a firsthand account by Pastor Castor McLeod. And so if you haven't got your copy of that, it's available at my website. I highly recommend you get a copy. And Sister Heidi always makes me let you know that the uh, magazine's available. Please get your copy of the magazine, okay? Uh, all you have to do, it's not, it's not listed in the, uh, with the books and stuff. It's just if you send $20 or more donation, this magazine's coming back to you. Just be sure we got your address, okay? Your love gift of $20 or more. So I want to make sure I get that out there before I get carried away and forget and then Heidi beats me up for forgetting her magazine. She put a lot of effort and work and writing and pictures and coordination to pull that together. Um, and it's a great way for you to be blessed. I guarantee it. Folks, the fire's out of control, but it's not the only thing. Jesus said in the last days there would also be pestilences. There would be diseases. There'd be plagues. And we got an outbreak. Madagascar. The plague. The black death. The bubonic plague turning into a pneumonic plague. That's what they're calling it, pneumonic plague. 45 people are dead. 387 people are sick. It's in Madagascar. It is a plague of biblical proportion, and it's spreading like wild in the island, African island nation of Madagascar. And uh, there's concerns of an epidemic. There's concerns of a biblical release of a plague upon the planet. And, uh, it, and what's, what's happened is the bubonic plague, which is carried by fleas on rats that jump off on people. Well, the bubonic plague can be treated, of course, with antibiotics aggressively if you catch it quick enough. But what's happening is this, this strain of the plague is attacking people's lungs and turning into pneumonic plague, very deadly, and will kill you in 24 hours. Plus, if you get it, you'll start coughing, and those coughing droplets are sending out uh, and spreading, and people are catching it airborne. This is a dangerous situation there. The World Health Organization, the CDC, everybody's trying to get their hands on it and trying to slow this thing down, but it is out of control. It is a plague of biblical proportion, and we really got to pray because this thing could literally destroy the island nation of Madagascar. Matter of fact, it could do more than that. It could literally spread around the world. This plague in medieval times destroyed about 50 million people, and uh, even though we have more medical abilities to combat it, if you don't contain it, especially in island, especially in nations, let's say in Africa, where that's their infrastructure, medical infrastructure is not as strong, you could be looking at literally thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands, if not a million people or more, dying from the bubonic or this what I'm what they're calling the pneumonic, new Munich, new pneumonia, pneumonic plague. All right. Uh Guys, there's more going on here. Um, let me tell you about this breakthrough. There's two breakthroughs. Planet X is real. Well, NASA admits that 
Planet nine, Israel, the mysterious planet number nine, which really is the same thing as planet X or Nibiru. Um, they've just changed the names, but finally NASA cannot, you know, never a straight answer when it comes to NASA, but here's what they're admitting. They're admitting it, uh, last night, Bart Begley has a powerful article about this at his website at the crusaderjournal.com. But also let me read to you what it says here in this report. Uh, it has been widely debated, um, among the science community for years. But now NASA claims that planet number nine does exist. The space agency highlights five different lines of evidence pointing to the existence of the mysterious world and says that it, uh, do, that, uh, researchers are now using a Subaru telescope in Hawaii in the hopes of finding planet nine and hope that its detection will also shed light on its origin. According to the daily mail, planet nine was first theorized by experts from Caltech in 2014. But guys, NASA needs to tell the truth on this. 1985, NASA said they discovered planet X and they put uh, a team of scientists and created a project called the Nibiru project. And for seven years, they studied planet X till the lead scientist there died mysteriously. When he died, they canceled the program and never spoke about it again. But, but that didn't mean they stopped studying it. And in the year 2015, first 2014, Caltech said they discovered planet number nine. And then in 2015, uh, the observatory over in the mountains of Chile said they spotted planet X or planet number nine, and it was in the constellation of Orion. Then NASA came out a few weeks later and said, yep, there is a planet number nine. Um, uh, and, uh, but which is the same thing as planet X. It just changed the name. If you were to remove this explanation and imagine planet nine does not exist, then it would generate more problems than you can solve. All of a sudden you have five different puzzles and you must come up with five different theories to explain them. But in 2016, it was published a study that examined the orbits of six objects in the Kuiper belt a distant region of icy bodies stretching from Neptune outward toward interstellar space. It find, its findings revealed that the objects all had elliptical orbits that point in the same direction and are tilted at 30 degrees downward compared to the plane in which the eight planets circle the sun. To investigate this further, the researchers used computer simulations of solar systems with planet number nine included. It showed that there should be more objects tilted at a 90 degrees to the plane of the eight planets. The team realizes that these five objects already known to astronomers as fits the bill. The following this study, two more clues have emerged about planet number nine. A second article led by Elizabeth Bailey showed that planet number nine could have tilted the planets. Here you go. Could have tilted the planets of our solar system. We're having a slight solar, uh, 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 we're having a pole shift and they're starting to blame it now on planet number nine, which you guys have been hearing the ancients who called it Nibiru and the people that have been on the internet who a lot of folks have called them kooky and crazy and conspiracy theorist. And let's just be honest. They've taken a lot of cheap shots at some of these guys, but I have to give them credit. They were rel relentless because they had scientific findings. A lot of these folks have been in the NASA and in the space agency and they're former employees and they're releasing quietly under the radar information that there is a planet number nine or a planet X. Planet X is real. Call it planet X, call it number nine, call it Nibiru, call it whatever you want to. Something, a binary system 
a dwarf star, call it whatever you want to call it. But God is shaking the heavens and Jesus says the heavens are going to be shaken. Like, and he says the stars are going to fall from heaven like a fig tree cast its untimely figs when it's shaken of a mighty wind. That's the words of Jesus. That's not NASA. NASA, you never get a straight answer. Jesus, you'll get the truth. Jesus said, listen, the sun is going to be darkened. Joel said, the moon will turn to blood. Joel said, Jesus said, there'll be signs in the sun, the moon, the stars, distress among nations with perplexity, the sea, the waves roaring and men's hearts will fail them for fear for looking after those things coming upon the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Paul said, the Lord's not only going to shake the earth, but the heavens also. And Peter said, the heavens will be on fire. The earth will melt with a fervent heat. The Bible tells you that these events are coming. It doesn't matter if I get a straight answer or not out of anybody. The Bi I'll go with the Bible. If the European Space Observatory struggles, I go with the Bible. If NASA says it's never going to happen, doesn't matter to me. I'm going with the Bible. But what you're getting, folks, is the NASA's of the world, the observatories of the world, the European space organizations and observatories and space agencies. Everybody has to start confirming stuff because they can't hide it anymore. There are five waves of energy. And those waves are being caused. And those waves are affecting the planet. And there are things that are happening up there that cannot be explained away by anybody. When asteroids are increasing at an exponential rate, when hurricanes are bringing 30-foot waves into Ireland in October, this is so out of character. This is so out of character. This is the worst storm in 50 years. When four, a category four, three of them, hit the United States. We never had two in one year. We've had three in one year. When there's straight line winds, raging forest fires, St. Cole's opening. Just I got a phone call this morning. Heidi did. In South Bend, Indiana, a 90-foot sinkhole opened up in South Bend, Indiana. They're rerouting traffic just out of nowhere. What? It's, it's happening everywhere. The earth is pulling apart. It's like hell is being enlarged and that without measure. I want to welcome all 1,725 of you. It is official. Planet number nine, planet X, Nibiru, call it what you want. NASA's confirming it is real and it's affecting. And they say right in the article that planet nine, because they want to, you know, is causing the entire solar system to tilt, to shift. All right. Now, let me give you this. Here's, so uh, here's another one. Uh, but now... The, we've been waiting for the announcement at 10 a.m. We told you this Friday that the European Space Observatory had a, a groundbreaking or, or brand new information never seen before, a phenomenon in the heavens. Well, they've released it. They say a neutron star collision has caused gravitational waves, the five waves of energy. Here's what they're saying. The gravitational waves are back. Well, they never left. And this time, they're not traveling alone. In the first four detections of these astronomical phenomenon, gravitational waves emanating from an emerging binary black hole, a source that puts off no light. But, but today, astronomers from LIGO, that's the laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory and Virgo Detector in Italy. They've announced that they've discovered a collision of a neutron stars. What? And that it's released both a stream of gravitational waves, five waves of energy, and a flash of light. This finding backs decades of old theories, including one by Albert Einstein. He said that gravitational waves would travel at the speed of light. And that's, that's what he, and, and that you could bend it. Remember? 
That was his law of relativity. And that was actually proven in a solar eclipse when the light bent during the blocking of the sun, which proved Einstein's theory. Well, it's a privilege to discover these neutron stars can also emanate gravitational waves, especially so close to the original gravitational wave discoveries. Uh, this uh, And so Stefano Covono, a researcher at the National Institute of Ast Astrophysics in Italy who participated in this collaboration, LIGO and Virgo, these two organizations identified gravitational waves from the twin neutron stars on August the 17th is when they spotted it, 130 million light years away. This is the greatest gravitational wave event that detected so far. Astronomers verified the source by neutron stars, low masses, black holes, tend to start at around three to five times the mass of the sun. But this new source ranged from 1.1 to 1.6 solar masses, which fit the bill for a neutron star. Though it doesn't seem massive, a neutron star is the collapsing core of a giant star after it goes supernova. They pack, they're packed with neutrons, hence the name, and are usually about 12 miles in diameter. The density of a neutron star is so great that, sc that scooping up a teaspoon of its matter would weigh more than a billion tons. What? God is amazing, isn't he? So he puts these real heavy objects in space and then makes it zero gravity. So they float. But then on the earth, he kind of gives us a gravitational pull to keep us from floating away. I mean, scientifically, the masterful, intelligent designer of God himself is so incredible that it should blow your mind. And uh, uh, so neutron stars like black holes were considered by astronomers to be a massive enough to interact with the universe, thus causing gravitational ripples in a, a curvature of space time. Neutron star mergers were what scientists initially expected to find at LIGO, explaining astrophysicist France Cordova, the director of the National Science Foundation, which of course funds the LIGO. Now we arguably know a lot about neutron stars and they can imagine them in binary systems, folks. Binaries more than large black holes. It is, said Cordova, it was a real surprise when we first found a black hole merger that were far away than this star merger. The way two massive objects become one is virtually the same, but for the neutron stars, it takes time. And as the stars swirl around each other, they begin losing angular momentum, which slowly closes the gap between them and of course will cause the collision, which then will shake the heavens. This will be a burst, of course, of short gamma rays. It, and, and this becomes a high energy cataclysmic collision in the, in the cosmos. And uh, it, what, what happens here? Two seconds after the waves pass through the Earth, NASA's Fer Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope and the European Space Agency's Gamma Ray Observatory spotted a surge of high energy light after this cataclysmic collision. This finding meant that the merger of the stars could cause a burst of short gamma rays and then a kilonova, it's called, a thousand times brighter and more violent than the average nova. What's left in the gamma ray afterglow are rare, heavy elements, such as plutonium and gold are found uh, in our jewelry and gadgets today. They're caused from the collision. These kinds of explosions as the source for the universe's heavy elements have been theorized for a long time by people looking at how elements get synthesized in the collapse of stars, neutron stars. So in other words, after it's all said and done, we're getting two massive confirmations. We're getting one confirmation that there is a planet number nine or planet X or Nibiru or call it whatever you want to call it. 
and that it does affect the earth and the rotation of all the planets in our solar system are tilting because of this gravitational pull from this far away planet number nine. That we're getting a confirmation from NASA today. We're also getting a confirmation that there is five, or not five, doesn't say five, but we're getting a confirmation that there are waves of energy. And those are being caused by powerful collisions of uh, neutron stars. The bottom line is this. They can say all kinds of things that's, uh, which they're working on. But Jesus already told us that these would be the signs of the last days. It would be in the heavens and on the earth. Evil men's hearts would be on evil continually. Murder, war, um, uh, uh, sexual perversion, wickedness in high places, the beast that wants to rise of the new world order, the, the apostasy uh, in the church world, the church of Philadelphia and the church of Laodicea. Uh, Laodicea, how they would have to, there would have to be. There's no question. God is sending a message. There's a remnant church that he's choosing, a remnant bride, a select groups of people throughout the world. And believe me, they're going to be super empowered with the spirit of God. Every source, every resource, Everything needed to bring in the greatest harvest in the history of the world is upon us. You're in the last day, a greatest time to be alive. Christ is coming for his bride. You want to be ready. I can tell you that right now. Praise the Lord. Let me just share with you some more information before Russ Dizdar joins us in a few moments. Israel was attacked last night again. First of all, Sunday. So in this strange, all these things are happening and then Israel gets attacked. Who thunk it? The Bible prophesied it. So there were two rockets fired out of the Sinai Peninsula that landed in Israel last night or yesterday afternoon. And then early this morning, as Israel's reconnaissance planes that fly around the region, keeping an eye, making sure Iran ain't sending uh, rockets uh, to all the uh, enemies of Israel. There you go. Israel was flying by when uh, they were fired upon by uh, Syria's anti-aircraft uh, uh, battery fired at the Israeli planes. Israel uh, did not hit the Israeli planes, thank God. Two hours later, Israel came back and blew those um, locations of Syria away that fired on them. Blew them away, just destroyed them in Syria. This happened today. So that was this morning. So there may be a repercussion. There may be a backlash. There may be an outcry. There may be a radical Islamic, uh, uh, again, attack on Israel. We don't know. But uh, Israeli planes, there you see what Israel did to them after they fired on Israel. Uh, Israel planes were not hit, but Syria opened fire. Now, there hasn't been a lot of exchanges between the Israelis and the Syrians since 1974, since the end of the war there, there hasn't been really much there, a little skirmishes, a little bit here and there. Generally, Syria doesn't get into the, uh, uh, the battles, or they don't get into it too much with Israel. They hate Israel. And President Assad wants to annihilate Israel, and he has said it numerous times, and he's buddied up with the Iranians now. And of course, the Russians are sitting there too, and the Turks have moved into Syria. So, I mean, you got the you got all the nations that want to be involved in the battle of Gog and Magog. They're all getting in position. And you got Hezbollah in southern Lebanon. They got a ton of rockets they got from Iran. And then you got Hamas sitting over there in Gaza. They got rockets from Iran. And then you got ISIS and the Muslim Brotherhood sitting up there in the Sinai Peninsula of Egypt. And they uh, got their rockets from Iran. Does anybody, uh, anybody see a picture here developing? And what happened? Trump's decertified the agreement with Iran and has teamed up with Benjamin Netanyahu and Israel. They've locked arms. And this is what I think you're seeing now is the retaliation by uh, some of the 
Islamic groups. And if war breaks out in the South Asia, if the South Asian Armageddon happens, which I think it's coming, I really do, I really do, then look for the Middle East to blow sky high with nations attacking Israel. Look for a simultaneous situation developing, which could really, folks, lead to World War III. So we're going to keep a close eye on it. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. You'll prosper if you do. You will prosper if you do. Let me tell you something else. That oil rig exploded in Louisiana, as we said. Our prayers are going out to the folks down there. Seven people injured, five of them critically. One person still missing. And so there's a lot of confusion down there. And we're really praying for these folks. We'll be in Louisiana this Saturday for the uh, Lightning Strikes the Bayou conference. It will be a powerful conference. We're expecting... Uh, just a tremendous turnout of folks. Over 600 people have registered. We know that God is going to move. There must be going to, this must be going to be a mighty conference. There must be going to be such a powerful move of God at this conference. Because any time that God gets ready to do something uh, so wonderful, so powerful, so amazing, then you start to see uh, the reaction, uh, Lucifer's desperation. And uh, it never works, okay? Oh, by the way, there's been a new man elected to prime minister of Austria. His name is Sebastian Kurz. Sebastian Kurz. He's only 31 years old, and he is the youngest leader in the world. He miraculously pulled off an upset. They call him the whiz kid. There he is. He's only 31 years old, and he is now the prime minister of Austria. And keep an eye on this guy because uh, he's in his early 30s and he's just moved into power. Now, he'll be starting to build alliances with the other nations of the European Union. And uh, let's just watch and see what develops out of that. I know I don't know much about him. I, I really don't. I don't know. He may be really uh, a, 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 a breath of fresh air for Europe and then again, who knows? Okay. I don't know. He could be the, uh, the opposite. I don't know. I don't know. I just know he, he came out of nowhere and, um, and he is a young man in his early thirties, something to watch, something to definitely watch. Now, let me tell you something else going on before Russ Dizdar gets here, uh, real quick here. Um, the, all of these things are happening, but that blood red sun, the sun darkened in midday in England is, is amazing. Look at all the things that are happening. The, the discovery of the, of the five waves of energy, the source of it. NASA admitting there is a planet number nine or planet X. They won't say planet X because that would really be, uh, that would take a lot of humbling yourself. But certainly things are happening. But Russ Dizdar is going to join us in about two minutes. I'm going to be right back <clears throat> with Russ Dizdar. Unbelievable, folks. Are you serious? Are you serious? A brand new book I've just finished called Reflections from the Land of the Prophets. This book is filled with beautiful pictures, a pictorial, if you will, of the Holy Land and some definite great insight to the prophets that once spoke mightily in the times leading us up to the present. It's a prophetic word, a reflection of what God has spoken, not only historically from the past, but for the future. Go to my website. It's available now. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands, thousands, a brand new DVD, Rapture Ready. Finally, we're going to answer the question. Millions of people want to know, what is the rapture? When is the rapture? And am I ready for the rapture? Well, this brand new DVD is filled with information, scripture, a PowerPoint presentation that will help you prepare to be rapture ready. We're living in those days. Are you ready to meet the Lord? Get this DVD now at my website. Their lives were prolonged for a season and time. Folks, let me tell you something. I have a book I really recommend you should get. You go to my website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. I have a book entitled The Zombie Apocalypse. Now, it has to do with actual, 35 actual accounts of demonic 
possession and manifestations that uh, is very troubling but will help you understand how demon spirits actually work in these last days. I highly recommend you get it also for your teens and college students to help explain to them the pitfalls to not fall into these uh, sorcery or witchcraft seances, Ouija boards, or some video games that could alter the mind and the soul of your child. Again, this book, it's only at my website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. There you'll find it on the products page. It'll be a blessing to you, insightful, and you'll bless the ministry. Wait till they catch you, okay? Hang in there, Russ. You hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Okay, I'll be right with you in a second. And mine. Please welcome Pastor Paul Bailey. What? Are you serious? Salvation Station. This is the Salvation Station. Oh, yes, it is. All right, folks, welcome back. Welcome back. And you're listen, folks, we have got a treat for you today. We're going to get down to business. This is when you get down to business. Our guest, Russ Dizdar, I believe, without question, the leading authority on demonology in the evangelical Christian world. Uh, his record certainly will indicate that, uh, a man that's been, uh, literally helping set people free. He, his website, shatter the darkness, uh, net uh, is just filled with great information. His books are phenomenal. He's got a great book called the black awakening, but he has much more material and he'll be joining us this Saturday at lightning strikes the Bayou conference. He'll be joining myself and LA Marzulli in what should be one of the uh, one of the most awesome conferences of the year down in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So without any further ado, the Black Awakening, the man who knows what's going on in the darkness, here he is, Russ Dizdar. Russ, welcome to the broadcast. Hey, Paul, it is uh, great to be with you. Uh, good to be here today. Get ready for this weekend. I'm pretty excited about uh, Baton Rouge. Have you ever been to Baton Rouge? Never in my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I remember you saying uh, to me uh, that, uh, you know, you may have to say boo-hoo to voodoo. I don't know if that's one of your presentations or not. <laughs> well, uh, that's, uh, that. you know what, I might use that as the title. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. Russ, uh, we're in a situation here, uh, again, that we're in October, and uh, we just had October the 13th. And, of course, Halloween is coming. So it, this seems like the time of year when the media and everywhere, the, the, the demons try to surface. Is there? Can you tell us what, what goes on during the occult practices during this time of year? Sure. There, uh, anybody looking at the ritual calendar uh, will see this also. But we And we've known it for years because we tracked it down in the 80s and 90s, but now the calendars are up. And it's just really a matter of seeing what pagans and Satanists and Wiccans and Druids and, you know, from all different backgrounds. But the worst of the worst is the underground, Paul. It's, it's uh, the, the real Luciferian, the blood and guts folks. Uh, they're the ones behind, you know, if, if you think in terms of secret government and, and the coming beast system, these are the folks that are behind that. So on a global scale, between uh, the 13th of October, uh, that date is where the it's scheduled for abductions. That's when they need to be able to bring their people, you know, get their get their coming sacrificial victims in. And they uh, will hold them, and there'll be preparation rituals. But the four big rituals, uh, and there's actually a number of them prior to All Hallows' Eve in Samhain, and then all the way to November 4th, which is uh, Demon Revels. Um, so you've got um, anything that you read on the calendar um, is true, but it, there's more to it behind all of that. So... Here's again where I've said, you know, all the conferences and I, I just uh, I, because it is so super secret and supernaturally, you know, protected and, and guarded, uh, it's it's hard to get, you know, everyone to really understand two principles. Number one. Just as we, as the body of Christ, cannot advance, see revivals, see tens of thousands saved, 
without the power of God advancing the kingdom of God. The other side cannot advance their agenda, their domain, their goals without real powers. It's, it's just like us, but the opposite, dark, finite, it's the satanic agenda. So how do they do it? The number one way they draw the powers and bring them and then use those powers to advance their agenda is through uh, blood ritual. That is the number one way, uh, the doorways uh, for, for powerful demons. So think in, think in these terms, and I'll just throw this out and we'll discuss this if you want. Over the last uh, 35 years, we've, we've gone after researching and gone after the underground, kind of the Ezekiel 8 type, you know, type of thing. And here's what we discovered. There's now 100 million victims, four generations of satanic ritual abuse. Here's what it means. That's the tools they use to do what they do. But they're, from that side, considered chosen ones, uh, servants of Satan. Or if you read in the parable of the tares, these are the tares uh, that are to be planted right out there among. But they're, but all of them, Paul, know how to summon demons, send demons. They've Every one of them have been involved in blood rituals. They know the power of demons. They have them. They can release them. They can target Christians. They can do rituals. So... That's that's it's one thing to say that if there's only a few of them here and there in obscure ways, well, but they're not. They're they're multi-continental. They're um, in every city in the United States. So when you think of rituals this coming October, All Hallows, All Hallows Eve, all the way to November fourth, think in terms of on a global scale, synchronized in the underground, the kind of rituals that were being done in, in Ezekiel chapter eight. Uh, or you read about in Deuteronomy, Le- Leviticus, the sorcerers, and the ma- you know all the ones, the wizards that peep. All these individuals are going to be doing what they've been trained and called to do in the underground. They're going to summon demons. They're going to do what they do to release more powers, target what they want to target, and help advance the cause. So this is my premise. There is well, no end of days. There is no antichri- chaos, antichrist, new world order, false prophet, open of, of the abyss without them this is what the body of christ has to understand and i want to say this in 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 saying that paul i want to say this it never negates the astounding power grace might mercy authority armor of god and sovereign direction of god it doesn't negate any of that no but it's but 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 if we know what we know and we know what to target and we know that that dark side is part of the reason why the much of the body of christ is so suppressed in its prayers, in its lack of demonstrative power from God. Amen. That's how. That's the other side. That's that's part of the reasons. So we got to. So, uh, so you're so saying, ahead. you're saying, Russ, we gotta we gotta be able to combat this with spiritual warfare. We can't we can't fight these demon spirits from hell in the flesh. We've got we've got to put on the whole armor of God, but we've got to get the weapons of our warfare. You know, are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. To That's pull true. down these strongholds. And you're saying the power of prayer, the power of prayer and fasting, the power of unity, the power of pulling together instead of pulling apart. These are these uh, fleshly responses by human nature, I guess, even in the Christian world, where people fall out one another and get all this, this, this uh, accusations and all this other stuff. And that the devil sets back and just laughs at this because he says, oh, they, this is going to be easy. Because, right. the, you know, so... You're saying there won't be an end of days. There won't be a need for the coming of Christ except for these Luciferians that are working in the secret darkness. And it's not just some vampire cult or some psycho. I want to ask you some things about the Las Vegas shooting in a little bit here. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you, you know, you're mentioning Ezekiel 8 and, you know, God told Ezekiel to look through the hole in the, in the wall and see the abominations that were being committed in, of course, in Israel. But, uh, let me ask you a question here that the uh, that's pressing uh, the fact that um, Harvey Weinstein, I mean, is this part of, look, you said October 13th, Friday the 13th, that was an abduct, abdu- abduction day. We know this goes on. Children are being stolen off the street, the sex trade industry, all things going on. But a guy like Harvey Weinstein, is he just a byproduct of the sexual perversion of our day today? Or why did all these powerful people connected with him, 
politicians, presidents. Why are they all covering this up? I mean, can you help me understand it? Is this part of yeah. the the issue? Yeah, it is. It is. And, and here, and this is again where, and I'm going to say this, no matter how many victims we've dealt with and learned from them, you know, listen to them, and, and, and no, no matter how many books or investigation, which is important in our, in our exposing issues, but I want to say biblical prophecy, is the most powerful, cutting-edge, infallible insight into all of this, including Harvey Weinstein. Um, 2 Thessalonians 2, the entire mysterium, the mystery of iniquity, the rise of the Antichrist, is is empowered by the operating, the real, uh, and, and I'm, I'm stressing it only because I, as a pastor, and I love the body of Christ, I don't, I believe much the body of Christ has been led to avoid discussions like this. Yeah. They shouldn't have. There's so much scripture content. Second of all, it weakens our, our perception and our, our ability to say, hey, we're going to respond now. As the people of God, the, you know, the righteous are as bold as the lion. We need to be at the forefront. So look at Harvey Weinstein. I don't know. Now we're seeing the public. We're seeing the shark fin. So... In 2 Thessalonians 2, there's this the unveiling uh, panoramic view of the rise of the Antichrist and his eventual apocalypse and Satan's behind it. And it says Satan's behind the counterfeit signs, wonders, and miracles. Then it says this, and in every sort of wickedness. Ah. So there's two veins to the satanic agenda. And I, to my surprise, now this is what I'm saying, this, the dark counterfeit supernaturalism is joined with dark, decadent um, morality because dark, decadent morality darkens Romans 1, 18 down, darkens the conscience, blinds. You know what the underground Lucifer, you know, the real ones have told us along yeah. the way when, when they do preparatory rituals and everything else and the sex rituals? They say because it actually darkens the constitution of a person and it gets them prepared for the demonic. Um, it's, 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 it's two, two things coming at once. They're in separate. So if you look back in book of revelation and Jezebel, occult demonic teaching along with occult demonic sex, um, you know, decadence and wickedness, yeah. you look at Tantra, you look at Crowley's sex magic, you look at all of that. So whether it's, uh, Maria Bravovic or Harry Weinstein digging into the underground, I mean, the, the, the wickedness, the decadence, the addiction and the, the sin of all of this, and the rape, the wrong, that's all, that all is just, you know, without question, part of the global um, heading the addicting the three big things in the end is that Satan, and we see this by the prophecy. The big three things is direct contact with demons and embracing sexual decadence to the point of massive addiction and the pharmacia, the drug thing. So it's not surprising to me to see a Harvey and many others, the ones he had caught anyway. He could have been caught many, many years ago, but people, like you said, they cover it up. The question yeah. is whether or not underneath this there is. The meetings, the rituals, the eyes wide shut stuff. Oh, you know there is, Russ. You and I and every we know there is. Kind of yeah, you're exactly right. And folks, you may notice when we got on this subject, you heard how Russ's voice is starting to fade in and out some and, and distort. That's because uh, our friends at the Alphabet Soup agencies are listening, okay? And they, they probably should. All right. But to your point, the uh, Maria Abranoff. The Harvey Weinstein's, the, you know, the Haitian connections to some of the major players on the left, folks. And that's in my DVD, Zombie Apocalypse. I mean, I tie it in for you how that the Haiti, how that there were so many trips made uh, to Haiti, to witch doctors, to the rituals, to the cannibalistic events that are spawning, I believe, these demonic uh, certainly demonic, uh, manifestations of the zombie apocalypse type thing. But it's more than just these, uh, really weird, horrible, uh, dreadful things that people do that we find out about all the time. But what Russ is talking about is the deep into the bowels of power where the, uh, like you said, eyes wide shut type stuff, the, the, the sexual, uh, uh, ritual, satanic, power, bloodletting, slaughter that goes on to gain power from Lucifer. And these Luciferians of this new world order, how that they are seemingly, Russ, and you can confirm this, 
seemingly they're getting very aggressive since the Trump election. It's as if the plan got altered. Am, am I right about that? Uh, you, you, Paul, you're right on that because – um, what I do when I look at all the politi- political side, I look at the positions people hold, and and you need to discern. We need to discern spiritually, in a sense, because uh, you know the political world is not the body of Christ. We have our job. We have uh, you know we have the explicit faithfulness of the Lord all the way to the end. And um, and let me just say quickly, we receive all of that we get from the Lord by faith alone, right? But we manifest it through obedience. Amen. That's um, that's the prayers and soul winning and praying for healing and deliverance and stepping out. So those guys, our brethren in the book of Acts, look at the signs and wonders, earthquakes, angelic visitation, advanced, thousands and thousands saved, and then confrontations with like, um, the Jewish sorcerer that went blind in front of Paul when he tried to pervert the right ways of the Lord. So there's an incredible backing that we get. So the greatest time for us in the world right now, in the worst of the worst of the darkness, and what we see today is it, where everybody's saying it's the worst ever, but let me say this. Biblically, prophetically speaking, it's it doesn't scratch the surface. That's right. Of it's the gonna acceleration get of all of it that's going to be coming in the days, weeks, months, and years, whatever we have left. So um, that that I want to emphasize in all of this. But um, well, aren't you saying that the can the can of worms just got opened? I sure. mean, this might be the worst we've ever seen it, but this isn't the worst it's going to get. No, uh, right. And and so when we look at the political side of things, God, and, and in my personal opinion, God might have done a Cyrus thing here to give, uh, you know, someone to stand against the New World Order. That's the biggest thing I see in him so far. I've studied him. He's not a part of the New World Order stuff. He's not a part of the underground elite. Um, and he stands against. And he's speaking, of course. Russell, and here's why. Here's one of the things. And you're speaking. See. And you're speaking of President Donald Trump. And folks, right. let me just say, yeah. Russ Dizdar, when he says that he studies someone. He not, he's not saying he just read the New York Times and that was it. I mean, he literally, yeah. this is an investigator. I mean, Russ has been on crime scenes. Yeah. He's reviewed crime scene material of s- satanic ritual abuse and murder and dismemberment and the horrific things that go on in the underworld. So when he says he studies someone, he actually does that. And he knows Trump is not a member of any of the secret society. He's not part of the club and he stands up against them constantly. Why do you think the networks hate on this man 24 seven? I mean, is he perfect? No. You know, am I perfect? No. But my Lord, have you ever seen such a thing? But this kind of persecution, Russ, that he's getting, we're getting also in the body of Christ, especially if we stand up against the, the wiles of the devil, don't we? Right. It's one thing to have an individual encounter with somebody and them opposing us, but we're seeing... Uh, we're seeing more of the broader cultural because the minds, because there's a shift in the air. There's a, the spirit of the, you know, the, the prince of the power of the, uh, of the air, the, you know, that's, so there's a corporate national issue because this is the way the dark side's running. Hanging with us, Russ. Hang with us, folks. You can hear what's going on. The, uh, they're, they're trying Just to censor. the bodies, you know. Russ, there's a little bit of censoring going on on you. They're su- trying to silence you okay. here. But, you, you know, we'll just pray through that right now in Jesus' name. And uh, we stand up against the wiles of the devil, and we bind every demon spirit that would try to hinder this conversation. And, in, and actually, we reverse this in Jesus' name, that this conversation, that this broadcast exponentially explodes across the Internet, and that many people come to Christ in the knowledge of the truth that Satan's a liar and he's defeated, and that the armies of God are rising up in this last stage. Russ, bring it back to you. Continue. All right. Are we okay? Does this sound all right now? I, yeah. I just check my I check my system to make sure I'm I'm okay here. Yeah, I'm um, yeah. It, Well, let's just mention this. Um, when when you find real Satanists, real occultists, real druids, real witness, you know, witches that know how to raise demons, summon demons and do spells, conjure demons and send those demons against people to do harm, then when you see a national level of thousands of these kind of people publicly getting together to get rid of Trump and 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 then to release these demons against all Christians yeah. or anybody supporting Trump. Listen, 
if we understand spiritual warfare, alert, alert, alert. Um, <laughs> this kind of stuff is real. The king of Moab in the Old Testament, when they were losing against Israel in a real battle, he sacrificed his son, blood sacrifice on the on the wall. Um, the powers of darkness came on the Moabite soldiers. They went into a frenzy, and they defeated Israel in that battle, that particular battle. They weaponized dark powers. So... It's nothing new to see from the Old Testament. You know, we all need to restudy the sorcerers, magazines, and wizards, and how those nations um, summoned war demons, summoned the war gods, or summoned demons to send against kings and, and Israel and, and sought to bring them down. They sought to uh, um, infiltrate and seduce. So when I see all these individuals, and I read the actual rituals that they are doing to summon demons, and send those demons against Trump. I mean, can you believe this? And it's public. And what they did publicly, the underground's doing secretly, and that's where the real power's at. So when I see the dark side so outraged at this that it's interrupted or, in their perception, slowed down, well, Satan's already mad because he knows his time is short. So this is a wrench in their aggressive dark machine. And for us, it's a matter of make the most of every opportunity, redeem the time. Let's do it. Let's get out there. Let's advance the cause of Christ. Um, there, there's, again, for us, darkness should never cause fear. It should cause outrage, moving us to, 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 to seek the Lord for every ounce of power, to be more faithful than ever, and to uh, unleash all that we need to do to advance the kingdom of God. And we can make a difference. We can. We're not going to stop the Antichrist. We're not going to stop things that we see in prophecy overall. We're not going to no. stop that. No. But we are going to have major impact in the salvation of souls, um, breaking down darkness, exposing darkness, power encounters that, like, when we read... Acts 19, and uh, the seven sons of Shiva, and all the stuff that went on that, that, that whole chapter, what happens right afterwards? When all of this in a public realm occurs, all of a sudden, it you know, puts fear in a lot of people, but the word of the Lord spreads, the name of Jesus is honored. Uh, so I look forward to the public power encounters with sorcerers. I look forward to the day that sorcerers and conjurers will walk into churches arrogantly and want to try to release demons, and, and people there will rise up and rebuke that, and they'll, these individuals will go down. And, 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 and if we do what we, we're supposed to do in the book, of, like, like the book of Acts, yes. then we will see constantly in every single power encounter where the believers are faithful, use their authority, continue to go, in every single case, there is a public demonstration of the of the power of God in Jesus' name over the dark powers and what they were attempting. Amen, amen. Folks, this is Russ Dizdar from ShatterTheDarkness.net. That's ShatterTheDarkness.net. Check out his uh, webpage. Uh, no question, uh, the things that are happening out there, uh, the demonic forces are rising. They're, I see the desperation. I see they're trying to, uh, as you say, the underground must be working overtime, trying to figure out how to rise up against the body of Christ. Ultimately, guys, Trump is representing freedom of freedom of uh, for Christians in this nation. No, no other. And listen, Belzebub can't cast out Belzebub. Okay, when you see people say things like Paul Begley's evil, Rust is Dar's evil. Donald Trump's evil, and then they need to run their little mouth. They're, they have no base. You have to understand, evil can't bring forth good fruit. Good trees bring forth good fruit. Corrupt trees bring forth corrupt fruit. All you got to do is just hang around a half hour. You'll figure it out. In other words, in the last days, the, the, they will be calling evil good and good evil. But these are the spirits of darkness. These are the folks. They even did it to Jesus. Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, who was opening blind eyes, healing lepers, raising people from the dead. And there was a crowd running around hollering, he's, he's of the devil, he's Satan, he is Belzebub. And Jesus just turned and rebuked him and said, look, Belzebub can't cast out Belzebub. Is Satan divided? So it's real easy to figure it out. It doesn't take much spiritual insight and discernment to understand that when the darkness rises against the children of the light, that uh, you could figure out who's on which side real fast. Now, the question is what Russ is saying. We as Christians have the authority. 
We got the power in the name of Jesus. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And I'm with Russ. I'm not afraid of anything that creeps and crawls on this earth or in the spiritual realm for that matter. Because of the power we have in Jesus Christ. But I respect the fact that Lucifer does have power. We better respect it. But we have the power to shatter it. Is that right, Russ? (laughs) <laughs> that's absolutely right. I mean, that's, and again, if we do what we're supposed to do, big, big, big teaching point, Old big Testament, if. Moses, he has his arms up, he's, he's interceding, Israel is fighting a demonized nation. What we need to know in the demonized nations of the Old Testament, which all of them were, every one of them around Israel, human sacrifice, child sacrifice, the Baals, Moloch, we got to understand how deadly. I don't even want to get into the Nephilim tribes and the alteration at that point, but you had Zamzumis and Imims, and you had, you had, this is why God led them to wipe out things. They were wiping out mutation. They were right, you know, they were, You're they were right. There was a whole another, another ballgame right there, but the point is that when the prayer arms, when the intercession was going forward, Israel was um, was winning. Yes. Uh, the hand of God, the power of the Lord was upon them. And when those arms went down because they got tired and so forth, they went down and in the, in the prayer intercession stopped. The other side, because their real demonic powers were in, in you know, um, in, in, you know, empowering, uh, in energizing that entire nation. So they began to win. Um, we got to bring that down. Look at America. This, you know, whether the rest of the world, this is true, rest of the world, but here in the United States, uh, the more, um, you know, the underground Satanism, the above ground, all of it, the more gateways to open demonic stuff to the point where the people who are practitioners begin to learn from the spirit guides, hey, we got to oppose these Christian people. Um, we got to come against them if we're going to ever have a you know counterfeit new world order. We're, we're going to have to oppose them. See, anyone that has a demon, masqueraded demon, a, a real raw demon, you know, however they have them, how, whatever function, powers, abilities the demons give, and, and the masquerading issue is a major, major lethal issue because most New Agers have that and they don't even know them. But they're real powers, and those powers will only guide them to do one thing, to negate Christ, shove them aside, bring forth fake you know, versions, de-deified versions, push them forward. But that push forward is always in opposition to the real kingdom of God. And so when they're out, you know, a new age is going to be out all over the place. Um, this in the next, you know, between the next number of days, all the way to the end of the month, uh, this weekend, you know, that we're going to be together. It's a big weekend for all of it. Yeah. And let me say this concerning Nolans and in, in, in Baton Rouge and all the voodoo, Vudan, Bruharia, the Abakwa, you know, the saint of death, all of that, um, and the summoning of demons. Actually, they're not going to bother you if you don't bother them. Right. But they, especially their priests and bokers and babalaos and all the rest of them, santeros, soon as you begin to, you know, like, huh, hey, no, I don't agree with you. You know, you and I are not of the same spirit. This is the temple of God doesn't have any fellowship with Belial, right? So um, that's when they're going to be like, they have no problem, even in Paulo and other stuff, to, to summon a spirit, do a ritual, do a thing, do a binding, do, do something against a real believer. So one thing is the general sense they release demons in the air, release demons as a whole, release demons to advance their cause. Then what believers don't know, and I put an extra chapter in this new book coming out that, that is targeted when, when they summon demons, like with this Trump thing. Now they've been doing this. We've, 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 we've learned in, in our, in our backtracking of all of this, they've been doing this in a real organized way in the underground anyway, against the body of Christ since uh, the beginning of the 70s in in a real organized way. Uh, It's more than ever now. And now we see a public level of this. Um, There's no question that those who know how to do spells and rituals, even in jobs, neighborhoods, etc., when those people that have those spirit guides and those demon spirit guides inside of them see you, Paul, or see me, or see real believers who have the spirit of God. You know, Jesus, I know, Paul, I know. The, the demons know. Yeah. And they might even guide the person, hey, do a thing ritual against, you know, inspire them. Do something against them. Stay away from them. Do this. So there's... um. 
So you're saying there is some targeting that goes on, maybe toward leaders uh, and, and what have you, but generally toward most people that are in the body of Christ, these types of demons that operate in the black magic of voodoo and hoodoo and I don't know, you named a bunch of them there. Yeah. Uh, and I can't wait to get that, to hear that message in its entirety. Folks, he's going, we're going right down into where the stuff goes on. We're going, we're going into the enemy's camp for us and holding a conference. Okay. Uh, but the good people of Baton Rouge, this is some of the most this is another reason we're going to Louisiana because the and and that part of the country because it is such a powerful Christian, rich Christian heritage of faith down there, and so the the good folks, the good Cajun folks down in there, plus everybody coming in from around the country and and other parts of the world, we want you to know that this will be a conference that uh, is going to change your life. It will literally change your life. Uh, the information you're going to receive and the anointing. The Lord's been telling me it's going to be one of the most powerful anointed uh, conferences we've ever hosted. And so we just can't wait. Russ, can we switch gears a minute? Because, But not much. This Las Vegas thing. What, I mean, I've really been wanting to get your take. First of all, tell them about your new book again you just mentioned. Yeah, Expelling Darkness. And we did everything we could to have it out prior to the conference. Um, it is, uh, it, it's just simply what we've been doing. It's, we, we use the word expelled. Ex, it comes from ekbalo in Greek. But it's, um, it's all, all about, um, the reasons why we need to be up to speed, uh, in the world of spiritual warfare, but how to do it. How to, uh, confront, uh, demon possessed people where we deal with possession, attachment, attack. Um, oppression. We deal with all of those. We deal with uh, the the believer's entire array of warfare and 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 God's you know empowerment and pre protection over us. But we give specifics and stuff, kind of like saying, "Here's what we're here's where we need to be. Here's where we are today. Here's what's coming, and here's some advanced things we need to do." Uh, but it's very practical. It's kind of a how-to book in the area of deliverance. And um, I'm. Uh, it looks like it's it's going to be on the publisher's site by Wednesday or Thursday of this week, but we won't have them at the con. Well, people can order them at the conference. Yeah, but I just I just did everything. I we couldn't get we couldn't uh, get the test book in quick enough. So um, anyway, it's coming, and uh, that's I think it's going to be a huge help uh, to folks and. Uh, that's, that's vital for us. You know, I think it's right. vital. I mean, I'm a pastor, you know that, and, and, uh, I love the body and, he, and I think you know that, but, yeah. um, I, you know, I knew it for 30 years locally here, the, the overwhelming majority of churches were massively lacking in the concept, uh, of spiritual warfare and 95 or 98% of them could not, could not, not just would not. Uh, they could not because they would not uh, do deliverances, which is a, sh a shame. I mean, it's a it's an embarrassment. We are to be the most powerful supernatural entity in the neighborhood, and we are to be able to you know advance and deal with this stuff. And uh, we should be a house uh, of 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 prayer where people show up saved, healed, delivered, helped, restored, ministered to, spoken into. That's what this local body. It should be the most exciting, empowered, supra-natural place in the, in the presence of the living Savior. Amen. Um, Amen, yeah. Russ. Amen. Amen. And great book, then, folks. Get it. Get your order in. Get your pre-order in because it's going to ship very soon, as soon as it hits his, his desk. And so you definitely want to get it. And like you said, down at the conference, folks can go to your table and put their uh, pre-order in for it. And that way it'd be coming your way. And after you hear Russ speak, you'll run to the table. You will run to the table to get his material because it's that good. It's uh, There's nobody like him on the planet. I think about all the time. I think about all the different uh, gifts of the Spirit of God and, 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 and ministry callings and things. And when I, when I see Russ Dizdar, I just I put him over here in this one place by himself. And I keep trying to find someone else to put over there with him. And I'm finding some that are trying. But this is the leading expert, guys. The leading expert on spiritual warfare and understanding uh, that we got the victory. All right? You got to know your enemy and then know how to defeat him. And I think that's what you'll get from Russ Dizdar. Russ, let's talk about the, the Vegas shooting because, yeah. man, this was a slaughter in, in plain view. And I'm struggling. I'm just going to say this. I'm struggling with how a 64-year-old man could get 23 guns and thousands of rounds of ammunition into the 32nd floor of a casino with cameras everywhere, and no one saw it or knew it. 
and how he could run back and forth from these two windows. I mean, if he if this man actually could do this, and if he did do this, then would he be one of your super soldiers that you talk about? I, I you know, and I know you're also been teaching on psychopaths. So I'm just going to drop this in your in your lap and say, Russ, what do you think happened in Las Vegas? Interesting. Yes. Um, yeah. We the very next day, of course, up all middle of the night, I'm listening and watching, and then since then, yeah, I I, I, I watched this kind of thing very closely. Number one, obviously, the carnage, the death, the the, the incredible sadness and and a terrible, terrible evil that it was um, and is, whether you talk about Holmes or Jared or VTEC shooter, or Boston bombers, et cetera, or in, what is that, Somalia today, Mogadishu today, yeah, look, at the, yeah. look at the terror there. Yeah. So, yeah, is it a terror event? Yeah. It, it, how does this fit in the spiritual realm? Um, it fits um, for them, let me say it this way, for, the, for them, magnificently. They loved it. The, that dark side loves carnage, fear, terror, bloodshed, destruction of life um so in in a con in the concept of the dark side they love this stuff that just went down they are behind it however you look at it so what i first did was um i went over eight reasons why we see possibilities of, of shooters like this cain killed abel sin was crouching at the door it can be a sin concept just sin out of the you know, the center of the heart, Jesus said, comes adulteries, murder, so forth. So it can be domestic violence. People's sin and their getting into it can, call, you know, can lead them to that. But this is bigger. This is much yeah, bigger. Much bigger. Um, Colonel Flynn said that this is a militaristic styled setup. This was in every fashion um, on a militaristic level. So let's look at what my categories of satanic super soldiers, program shooters. We've dealt with them. We've dealt with, we've actually engaged, talked to, took a weapon from <laughs> program shooters, the program what? inside okay. you know, personalities. Okay. So I look at this guy here and begin to look at everything. Okay. Eliminate ISIS, eliminate some other stuff that you, everybody knows they're struggling to find motivation. Right. I'm not. Okay. Um, here's why. There's a fitting of four categories. When the Red Horse event occurs in the future, which I believe is the Black Awakening issue, um, the Greek word spadzo is used, not, not the word for direct war. Spadzo is used in animal butchery and animal ritual sacrifice in a bloody, brutal fashion. So the Red Horse event, multi, you know, continental unleashing of this kind of thing. But I think we're going to see and continue to see eruptions of that. So I look at this guy. Does he fit the characteristics possibly of a programmed individual? My answer is yes. Here's okay. why. And I okay. don't know him. I can't say it definitively. If I could meet, if I could have met him, looked at him, dealt with him, engaged him on personalities, hidden subpersonalities, maybe we could have found something out. But here's 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 some of the categories of Holmes, um, Jared, uh, Vitek. Here's here what, what you hear afterwards. Number one, the seemingly senseless. Random, random seeming. Um, was there any targets in this? Um, I mean, the utter, absolute slaughter with the goal to create the largest level of slaughter possible. It wasn't about destructions of buildings. No. Even if he could have shot with that special ammo into those fuel tanks, there would have been thousands dead. Um, it would have been massive if he could have exploded those. He had bomb making material, um, you, like you mentioned, the weapon, the weapons issue, the kind of ammunition, armor piercing stuff that he had. So when I look at all of that, first of all, the first premise is what he did and 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 what it created. Okay, okay, now you okay. So the first, so the first thing is you say yes, he does qualify for the programmed shooter and in just one question who would be programming these people to do this you are the first one to catch that paul that you are at the top of the class of uh the russ dinsdar school of demonology <laughs> <laughs> let me okay. tell you why because <coughs> there is no program shooter that doesn't have handlers a program shooter is somebody who's been taken 
a, a sub personality has been created, and that sub personality has been trained, conditioned, programmed, put down. It is a, it, it, and the main person may not even know. Now, let me stop right here to say, this is not just my content or speculation or conspiracy. We can go back sixty some years, seventy years to G. H. Estabrooks. Um, there's a book he put out called Hypnotism. There's a chapter called The Weaponization. In that chapter, he was he's a globally renowned mind control specialist, psychologist. He was world renowned. He was hired by U.S. military. And in that chapter, he says, we've learned how to create programmed assassins. In that chapter, he says, we've been able to create multiple personalities in soldiers. And here's what he says in the chapter. We can create sub-personalities, program them to be infiltrators, to go out and sow disinformation, to create whatever they want to do. And, and one of the primary sub-programmed alter-personalities would be assassins, shooters. Okay. And he describes it in there. And here's what he says. Here's what he says. I didn't do this. G.H. Estabrook said, we need to create many of these super soldiers and place them in every department of U.S. military wow. so that in the future we can have a fifth column of super soldiers to call on, trigger, you know, to, to sum it up. Now, when was the book written? 1947. Wow. 1947. So the technology to create alter personalities, program them, it's known. It's there. It's been there. So every satanic, ritually abused person, that's the process, but every one of them worldwide, uh, and especially first generation, which this guy would fit, first generation, by the way, um, everyone that we've ever met has programmed shooter assassins on the inside. Everyone. Okay. Um, so that's why I'm saying that in our categorization, number one, what he did fits what okay. they're all about. All right, so that's the, so that's the first one you're saying. He fits right. the program shooter assassin uh, right. role. What? So you say there's four things. So what's yeah. number two? Number two, after it's all done, suicide programming. Okay. Every one of them has suicide programming. Take another personality is trained to take the body out so that nobody can get them, nobody can interrogate them, nobody can, you know, do anything to find out where this came from. It's a suicide programming is nothing more than a the, the cover up. Okay. That's okay. that's um, that's so that there's no loose ends and so that no one can get to the handlers. Correct. That's the because the handlers are the ones, even in criminalistics, they would be charged. Here's what I say. God will charge them with the crime because what they have done is they have, it's an imposition of will, programmed personality. Like think in terms of the best way to, easy way to understand this is um, Montel Williams having a hypnotist on stage and 10 people are sitting in chairs and he allows the hypnotist to hypnotize all of them, put them into a trance. He has a 350 pound big football player that he has under trance under hypnosis, and he says, you're a 12-year-old ballerina, and you're going to dance like a 12-year-old ballerina, and you're going to sing like a little girl. And he has this guy do this for 20 minutes. Everybody's laughing. It's funny to see this. The guy's talking, you know, sing like a little girl. He says, now, when I count to three, you're not going to remember anything. You're going to feel refreshed, and uh, you'll come out of this. One, two, three, snap, and, and the guy's back to himself. He doesn't know what happened. Right? Wow. Wow. Then the crowd is laughing, right? Right. Well, he's going to deny it because in his con in his normal consciousness, no memory is embedded. Wow. It's embedded in the subconscious. So he's laughing, laughing. Nobody, no, I didn't do that. They show him the video. He's embarrassed, right? Right. Because he, he can't believe anybody got him to do that. Wow. Well, it, anybody in hypnosis that has any worth in, in, in truth will tell you that the old lie you can't hypnotize somebody to do something against their will. That's a lie. That's always been a lie. All the real hypnotists, uh, the founder of the Ericksonian, uh, Corey Dunn Hammond at the Mind Control Conference in Richmond, Virginia in the early 90s, the big famous one, I was at that one. They all acknowledged. We, they can get people to commit sex acts, rob a bank, do whatever. If you can put them down dark, you know, deep enough in the trance state, um, you can get them to do anything against their will or anybody else's will. 
But the person doing it isn't the... It's like having a, a remote control car. I've got the little battery-operated steering wheel and buttons in my hand, and the little car is 20 feet in front of me, and I'm, I'm driving the car. I'm running the car. Yeah, so, it's, so is that kind of this, a strong delusion that, that the Antichrist in Second Thessalonians 2, I mean, and, and the false prophet, do they put the world under some kind of uh, a hypnotic... Hypnotic trance using maybe iPhones, Androids, or, 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 or ways to communicate. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm just asking, yeah. is that kind of ability going to be prevalent among the uh, Antichrist? Well, I, I, let me tell you this. Uh, and again, this is my opinion. Nobody has to believe me, but here's my opinion. I believe that the modern-day satanic ritual abuse of victims that began in the late 40s, that are here today, and now there's four generations, starting at 70 years old, going down, a hundred million worldwide. I do believe they are the coming troops of Antichrist. I do believe they are the program soldiers. I do believe that every one of them we engage are also demonized, also believe in a coming world leader. They're all committed to this agenda. So, biblically speaking, nobody's heard a sermon yet on the troops of Antichrist, but it's there in the book of Revelation. Yes, it is. Uh, it, it, it shows us the picture all the way to, I mean, even before, but in Revelation 19, 19, the favor on the Antichrist gets out on the field, the kings of the earth, with their armies, yeah. plural, yeah. plural. And the only reason that they're there in Revelation 19, 19 is because Revelation 16, the demons that are sent out of the mouths of the false prophet, Antichrist, and dragon, those demons are sent in ritualistic form in the largest planetary release of demonic seduction power. We That's Revelation 16, folks. That's when the, the scripture says these unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, of the beast, and of the false prophet, and they go and they actually manipulate the kings of the earth and right. driving them into this battle of the great day of God Almighty. I think it says the battle of Armageddon. Right, and, and, the battle of Armageddon. So that's, there's, there's no Armageddon without the supernatural global i mean listen this, this has never happened in human history so this event from his revelation 16 that god rips open and shows us it's a global thing it leads directly to revelation 1919 which is a fulfillment of psalm 2 why do the nations you know inspire the people's plot in vain the kings of their take their stand against who against the lord and the lord's christ the lord's christ messiah so in revelation 1919 the world's largest altered augmented programmed, demonized, advanced super soldiers from around the world will be gathering around Jerusalem. Here's what Revelation 1919 shows. They raise their weapons into the sky. They're there, if you read Revelation 1919, to come and stop the descent of the living Christ yep. and to fight against the armies that are following. Wow. Paul, you and I are Look at, look at verse 11 and 11 through 14. That's me and you. Yeah. We're part of the armies dressed in white. We are called armies coming down. Yes. But there's only one commander who will speak and annihilate the largest militaristic, most advanced, supernaturally empowered system in all history. It may be over in minutes. It won't take long. That's why Jesus said for the Lord, uh, no, one scripture says, for the Lord will destroy the devil with the brightness of his coming. I think it was Paul said that. And even the even Jesus said that when the Lord returns, he'll return as as lightning comes from the east to the west. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. So you're you're referring to this white horse rider and his yeah. all right the white yeah, okay. the white horse rider Jesus the, the Christ. Four hallelujah Revelation nineteen. Study, I mean, yeah. uh, everybody listening, study the whole chapter today. The four hallelujahs. Get those down, man. That's our that's our song. We're going to be doing it. Yep. That's, that's us in the future. We're already glorified, you know, immortals. You know, we're coming down with the Amen. King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Awesome. We've seen him. We we there. We're now we're now we're descending Amen. for the last day of human fallen human history, Amen. which is the culmination of the entire satanic agenda. That's what they're all about. Get to Armageddon. The whole reason stop the descent of Christ because Revelation twenty. Satan's going to be bound for a thousand years. Thank you, they're, Jesus. They're, they, this is real. This is a real... Of they, course. They have plotted this to stop. And, you know, uh, and folks, this is the kind of thing uh, that you're going to hear from Russ Dizdar, this kind of unbelievable preaching and uh, incredible presentation. This is why you want to be at, at the 
when lightning strikes the Bayou Conference, because that's exactly what's going to happen. Uh, we may even, you know, we're going to be able to see and feel and realize and, and be able to absorb the powerful word of God, and it will manifest in your life as victors. The victors, we have it. Russ, you give me two. Well, number one, the shooter was had all the characteristics of program shooter or assassin. Number two, he also seemed to be program suicidal to protect the handlers. Number three, what's number three? Number three is that after it's all said and done, after everybody begins to look, notice what's said about him. Brother said it. The girlfriend says it. Past workers have said it. He's a nice man. He wouldn't do this. It can't be him. This, he would never consider this. This is the picture. He's blended into society. He's not on the radar of anybody. He's just among everything. He's just living his life as the regular person, as Stephen Paddock would do. He's living his life, doing his stuff, but inside of him is something else. Is a highly trained, militaristic, enabled um, and when we say programming, there's really no conscience there. In programming, the conscience has been seared out, literally, cauterized in the sense that all that part of the personality knows to do is what the programmers programmed them and t assigned them to do. So that when they're triggered, they're released to do all that they do. If they're caught, and I think the cases of Holmes and Jared... Jared was going to kill himself, but they grabbed him, put him down, stopped him from putting in that last magazine of bullets. I believe Holmes was going to do that. He wasn't going to go back to his house where he had all the bombs and blow up everybody. No. I think he was going to kill himself, but his gun jammed, and they got him. Both of them, when they're taken to jail, they, 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 they don't know where they were for a day. They don't, they don't remember anything. Uh, Jared woke up in jail and says, why am I here? What's going on? What's happening? Um, the main personality doesn't even know. So, um, so the third principle is when you look at them and kind of then begin to profile where they come from. So you're, you're, you're bringing out a great point, and that is that the reason, and the number three part, is that the profile of the shooter is completely hidden uh, in a deceptive cloak of darkness that is so good that nobody, everyone that knows them personally don't even see it. And for that to happen, Russ, you would have to be convinced yourself. You can't, nobody's that good, okay? Nobody's that good that can, that can deceive everybody around them and still be conscious of what they're doing. So in other words, he had to be so good that not only his girlfriend, his, his ex-wife, his brothers, his, uh, <laughs> his gambling partners, the prostitutes, everybody else that he knew. Nobody suspected this because he must have been so programmed, he didn't even know that he was this. Or, or you, know, you know what I'm saying? It was so right. hidden, buried. That's three. What's number four? Number four would be that everything that was done... Um, and, and this kind of fits number one still, but it's um, beyond everything done is beyond his normal um, abilities. Super. Um, it's super. It's super. Right, it's like right. Jason Bourne kind of stuff. Sure. Yeah, it really is. And and, and, and people kind of see the movies, they, they, they don't understand. Like in the movie Jason Bourne, which brought out some of these principles, he didn't know. He, he, he had to fight to get his memories back. He was used as a programmed assassin. Now, from 1947, Paul, look back 1947 in U.S. military. If this is what they were really doing, where the Monarch, MK Ultra, all of these projects that people have been talking about, Go back to the mid 1940s, where they learn it. This technology came from the spiritually induced, inspired demonic Nazi, Mingala, their science. This is what came. You know what Himmler said? Here's Himmler's quote back when they began Lebensborn, the projects would develop that would develop. Now we know this in history, they were going to develop. Godmen, super soldier godmen, right. hybrid humans right. that could fight better, do everything. That's, that was their vision. That's all true. Uh, they created Lebensborn to create a birthing center to backbreed. Whether we want to believe it or not, they, they, their version was to backbreed to the occult-oriented, Nephilim-oriented Aryan. Yeah. So 
regardless of whether you anybody believes that, that's what they believe, that's what they were doing. And here's Himmler's statement. If we could but create 200 million of these super soldiers, these this master race, we could not only conquer the entire world, but we can maintain and rule it for 1,000 years. Isn't it strange? Reich. Isn't it strange that he would use the number 200 million? That's the number in Revelation. Exactly. And that's the exact number of revelation that Satan's army will be. And uh, the, isn't, it, isn't it ironic that he says to build, be able to maintain the world and rule the world for a thousand years, that's the exact amount that Christ will rule. Mm. <laughs> it's counterfeit. <laughs> Everything he does. See, here's again the satanic side, the biblical uh, unveiling of the, of the dark. That's why we need to know his, who he is his nature, his methods, his agenda. And I'm saying again, overwhelmingly, at all the prophecy conferences, prophecy books, Paul, I, I've studied hard, 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 and I'm saying we are lacking in the greatest empowered content, biblical prophecy, to give us, we, we would be ahead of all this. So that like um, P Peter on the day of Pentecost, when power came, all that came, he says, this is, is that, that which the prophet Joel spoke about. This is that. Well, what we're seeing today all around us, the dismantling, the chaos, the bloodshed, the earthquakes, the environmental catastrophes, this is that what Jesus said in Matthew 24, wow. the Odin, the times of sorrow. Super soldiers, underground, satanic rituals, darkness, um, sexual decadence connected to satanic, dark occult powers. This is that which God has already given us insight to, to say, Here's the warning. Uh, here's what's going to be happening. Prepare yourselves. Advance as my people. Get out there and uh, engage. Uh, warn the world. Now, you'll hear me say this on Saturday. I'm going to give, if you don't mind, I'm going to give the most dire, dark picture. Nobody's going to like me. In the first 50 or 40, 40 minutes. Okay. <laughs> and then okay. This, and then at the last side of it, I'll give them the hallelujah. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Is this, so this is a, this is a disclaimer. And, and how biblical it is. <laughs> this is a disclaimer, folks. Here's a pre, here's the warning. You're getting the warning. Warning. The truth will be revealed. Russ Dizdar, the first half of his presentation will be of the dark side, but the second half will be the hallelujah side. Okay. So, <laughs> all right. But hey, let me say something, Russ. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of K-Love radio stations. They're pretty well across the whole country now. Many Christian radio stations are owned by K-Love. Positive, encouraging K-Love. They're always very positive, very, 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 very encouraging. And they play the latest of praise and worship music. Okay? They do a great job. Well, recently there was a survey done across America asking parishioners of churches all across America of every denomination of Christianity what do you like your church? And 95% said, yeah, I like my church. I like where I go to church. Wonderful people there. The pastor's nice. Uh, you know, spaghetti dinners. I mean, you know, good fellowship. It will, is there anything about your church that you wish you could change? And the answer was 90% of the people, and they were asked several, several questions, but the one question about the sermons, and 90% said, well, nice sermons, but they're not relevant today. We wish that the sermons would be more on the events of today, the things that are happening now that are more relevant. Because we don't understand why these things are happening like in the Middle East and the catastrophes. We wish there were more of the relevant. 90%, and I'm talking now, so, so Russ, what you and I have been doing, this is that? The people are asking, what is this? And we've got to tell them it's that in the Bible. And that's, that's what right. you're saying. And, and, I, and, and, and listen, you and I, you and I, we're not worried for ourselves. We're no. saved. I know who I'm going to be. If I go out today, I'm going to see the face of my king that I've loved for 40 years. I'm going to eventually be in an immortal, indestructible body. I mean, I, I know who I am. Right. I, my concern is for the world. In Revelation 12, the woes... Every time he gives the woes to the inhabitants of the earth, that's in reference to the lost, 
They're in danger. They're in dire danger. Um, uh, that's part of why we must ramp up everything because, because we know that God is not willing to, that anybody perish. God really wants to save people more than the body of Christ does, more than we do. He wants to save. Amen. Russ, you still there? Doing it. Yes. All right. Russ, this might have been one of the most one. This might be the most powerful prophetic hour I've ever. I mean, I'm sitting here writing notes and just and just getting just. I mean, I'm getting all pumped up because I know that what you've just been discussing here today answered a lot of questions for me, and I'm sure our listeners. And uh, we're going to continue to push forward, folks. It's Russ Dizdar. His website shatterthedarkness.net. That shatterthedarkness.net. Check out his material, Russ. Give them, tell them a little bit more about your website and what they can find. Uh, sure. Um, shatterthedarkness.net. If you go there, um, you'll see the Radio Times. You'll see the right side materials. Don't forget to look at the training, the free training courses. And uh, we've got more coming up constantly on all levels. There's about a 1,000 hours, the pure training lectures from all kinds of subjects. And uh, then there's, of course, hundreds of hours of uh, radio archives. So there's just, it's all free. Um, and, and just take and download and use and make CDs, whatever you want to. Um, and, and keep us in your prayers. Uh, there's a lot of, a lot of crazy battles. And, and we've, we've had a lot of interruptions in the last three weeks here. Uh, but we are, uh, we are, we're ready to come uh, ablaze uh, by the hand of God, Paul, and, and see you this Saturday, and and see it. And I, I just pray that it's Acts chapter four all over. Amen, amen, amen. Well, God bless you, Russ. Travel safely, and we will see you, Lord willing, Saturday. Uh, probably before that, you'll be in. You'll get in the day before, or so so yep. I'll see you down in Baton Rouge. Absolutely. Thank you, Pastor Paul. Bye bye. Right. Bye bye. There you go, folks. I mean, it doesn't get more. I told you, he is a leading expert in his field. We didn't even get into the deliverance sessions and the demons he's had to cast out and the manifestations on people. And he is, I've heard him speak on those things, and it's just incredible. But what he's saying is, what we're witnessing, what you're seeing played out in front of your very eyes in the media, is the actual plan of the arrival of the Antichrist, the unveiling, the uh, breaking out. But meanwhile, you heard Russ say it time and time and time again. This is the opportunity for the church for the greatest harvest in history. We're empowered by the power of the Holy Ghost. And so I understand I will run into obstacles. There will be opposition against me. We're going to face that every one of us. There's going to be some that are going to you know, just can't can't deal with it. We're going to move on, though. And what will happen is this, as God raises up this remnant church of believers, the greatest harvest in history of folks coming to Christ, are, it, we're, we're seeing it already, but it's just the beginning of what God is doing in these last days. And some of you are watching right now. You're like, Pastor, I'm not ready for the end times. I'm not saved. I mean, I mean, look, I've been, I didn't realize that this is the forces of darkness that are at play here. But you individually can get your life right with God. You individually can become a born again believer. I want to ask you, I'm going to encourage you. God said, for God so loved the world, Jesus said that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. There is right now over 1,700 people at YouTube live alone. Plus the hundreds of you at New Live Stream and Roku Satellite and those of you at Periscope and at our website and the thousands of you that are watching this on YouTube, on the archives in the next 24 hours, whether this is live or not, you get ready to pray and give your life to Jesus Christ because we are running out of time. But if you're watching right now, I want you to type in the chat room, I want to be saved because I will pray with you live in real time and let's get saved 16 people did last night what about you i'm going to write your name down the moderators will help us gather the names folks this is the moment this is the hour this is your day to be born again type i want to be saved i'm going to just pull this paper off here right now and write down the names of those who said that's it i am not going to go into the end times lost I'm not going to be devoured by sin and the devil, but I'm going to come alive in Christ. This is your hour. Do it right now. God's mercy kept me 
So I wouldn't let go. Come on right now. Come on right now. This is the moment. Jesus loves you. The devil can't can't take your soul to hell. You would have to allow it to go in that direction. Satan can't take it. The Lord whom he says, Stephen Dudley wants to be saved. God bless you, Stephen. Praise God. Liam wants to be saved. Marilyn Hurley wants to be saved. Praise God. Mary Ann Hurley. What about you, folks? What about you? What about you? So I wouldn't let go. So I'm here today because he kept me. I'm alive Brad Urban wants to be saved. God bless you, Brad. Because of Some of you need to rededicate. God's mercy Lucas Aguero so I wouldn't let go. wants to be saved. Praise God. Jim Presley wants to be saved. Praise the Lord. Brad. I think Brad Urban. We got him. Thank you, Nick. Amen. Amen. Come on, there's others. You say, Pastor, I don't know. Maybe I'll be all right. No, you won't be all right. You can't. None of us can make this thing on our own. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way. Reba Samilia. Saima. Reba Salima. There we go. Wants to be saved. Praise God. This is the moment. Church pray. Ben Dover. Ben, God bless you in Jesus' name. Wants to be saved. Jim wants to be saved. God bless you, Jim. How many others? Deal Mark wants to be saved. We're going to pray with every person that wants to be born again. So I wouldn't let go. You know, the Bible says, For by grace are you saved through faith. It's not in ourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works. <laughs> Least any man should boast. You know what's amazing? We're having these events taking place, the shootings, the massacrings, and scientists are now admitting there's a planet number nine. Scientists are admitting there is waves of energy. There's, there's the, the sun turned blood red in, in midday in England. They say it's because Hurricane Ophia did it. But what about Hurricane Ophia? Hurricane Harvey? Hurricane Irma? Hurricane Maria? What about the earthquakes in Mexico and the super volcano? There's another person wanting to be saved. Uh, and I, it's Jigokulu. I can't uh, pronounce that. I don't know what country you're from, but. We just want you to know, God bless you. Also, Greta Lucas wants to be saved. We're going to play this song again. We got Liam. Amen. We got Walter wanting to be saved. Praise God. Amen. Stephen Dudley, Liam, Mary Ann Hurley, Brad Urban, Lucas, Jim Presley, Reba Salima, and Ben, and also Dio Mark and Jim. And uh, Jaclusi and Greta Lucas and Walter. Like and the Bible tells us that whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be My saved. Church, we need some, we need some, some of the believers out there right now to bind the down. demons that are trying to Lord hold God people from being me. saved. David wants to be saved. There's a lot of folks right now. Jennifer wants to be saved. A lot of people are on the fence. A lot of folks. And the spirit of darkness is trying to interfere with the Holy Ghost. But the Lord told me that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. 
And he said, Behold, I give you power to tread over those serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall harm them. But nevertheless, rejoice not because these demon spirits are subject unto you. No. Rather rejoice because your name is written down in glory. There are people that want to be saved. There are people that are drifting too far from the shore. There are Christians that need to rededicate. There are people that need to repent. There are folks that need to renew their covenant with God. We're in the last days. But there's so many who are not saved. God bless you, Seymour. God bless you in Jesus' name. This is the moment. You own it. This is the day. This is the moment. Receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and be born again. Today, today, today is the day of salvation. Praise His holy name. <laughs> praise God. It's amazing what God is doing. Oh, praise the Lord. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Again, 16 like last night. And there's others. There's others. Jason Ali wants to be saved. God bless, God bless you, Jason. How many more? Also, Robert Cruz wants to be saved. It's time, folks, to get off the fence. It's time. It is time. See, you have no promise of tomorrow. You heard what Russ said. He said, I'm not worried. I know that I'm just leaving this world. I'll become an immortal. In the, in the precious power of God, I'll become uh, free from the bondage of this world cursed with sin. Christ already destroyed the works of darkness at the cross, but he's going to finish him off on his return. Are you ready? Are you ready? Or are you going to be left behind? I'm telling you, don't do this. Let's get saved. Let's get born again. Let's get set free. Whom the Son of Man makes free is free indeed. Break the chain. Break loose. Break free. Come to Christ and be saved. Saved. Saved in Jesus' name. Are you going to do it? God bless you. Hector also wanted to be saved. T-Monk 38 also wanting to be saved. God bless you in Jesus' name. All right, rededicate. Okay, excuse me. I'm sorry. And, and we praise God for that. Melissa Anderson wanting to be saved. Praise the Lord. Praise God for Melissa Anderson. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray with all these folks right now. And those of you watching on Roku, Antonio also wants to be saved. Those of you that are watching at my website or watching or listening on iPhones and uh, uh, also, uh, and it just, I want you to pray with me. I want you to call on the name of Jesus, okay? Pastor Begley can't save you. God bless you, Beavis. Let's pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to be saved. I want to be born again. I want to be set free. I want to be on the right side. I don't want to be in the darkness. I don't want my soul to be lost. So I'm repenting of my sins. God bless you, Antonio Ramos. I'm calling upon the name of the Lord. God bless you, John. God bless you, Tigress, rededicating. I'm asking Christ to come into my life and to set me free. I'm repenting of my sins and I'm confessing my sins to God and I'm accepting Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior to, to set me free, to wash me in the precious blood. God bless you, Wendy. Because I believe, I believe, I believe, I receive Jesus Christ as my Savior. I believe Yeshua is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. I believe that Christ Jesus died on the cross for my sins. God bless you, Cameron. God bless you, the Romero family. I believe that Jesus rose from the dead. I believe that he ascended into heaven. And I believe he's coming back again. Soon and very soon. And I want to be ready. 
So right here, right now, by faith, in God's grace, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, I am saved, 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 healed, delivered, set free, born again, saved in Jesus' name, saved in Jesus' name. Somebody shout! Glory! Counts the stars, one and all. He knows how much sand is on the shore. He sees every sparrow that falls. Welcome to the family, all 23 of you. Made the mountains and God bless the seas. all you rededicated. He's in control Repenting, of everything. Reaffirming. Rise up, church. Rise up. Small. You're on the winning he side. He knows my name. Every step that I take. Every move that I make. Every tear that I cry. He knows my name. When I'm overwhelmed by the pain. I can't see the light of can't tell you what's in store I don't know a lot of things Somebody shout! I don't have all the answers to the questions of life But I know in whom I have believed He knows my name Every step that I take Every move that I make Every tear that I It's amazing what's going on here. Yes, he knows your name and your name has been written in the Lamb's book of life. 23 new brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the family of God. Your names have been written in the Lamb's book of life. And that's the people that are here live in the chat room right now. That's not counting those of you who prayed on the radio on your cell phone, on Roku, at our website, or wherever you might be, can't get in a chat room. That's not counting all of you that's giving your life to Christ watching this archive of this broadcast. You're, God knows who you are. Pastor Begley might not be live, but Jesus is always live. And he is writing your name down in the Lamb's book of life. I want to encourage you. I really do. Oh man, are you serious? I feel so good about the harvest of souls coming into the kingdom. We're winning the battle, folks. We are winning the battle, all right? Uh, I would encourage you to get baptized, to find a pastor, find a church, uh, a Messianic congregation, somewhere in the community where you live. And you can go there and say, look, I got born again. I got saved and I want to be baptized just like Jesus was. He died on the cross and buried and rose from the grave. And I just got born again. The old man died and a new, new man's alive now. In the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Some of you may need, if you need help finding a church, a pastor or a Messianic congregation, you can send an email to converts.2016 at gmail.com. That's converts. 2016 at gmail.com. If you need a Bible, I'll send it to you for free and pay the postage and get it to you no matter where you are in the world. We have sent out over 18,000 Bibles free and paid the postage. This is unbelievable. It, and, and, and look, look, we want you to have it. If you got one, get it. Dust it off. If you know where to get one, go get it. But we want to help those who need help. And we can do this in Jesus' name. If there's somebody sick, I'll send you a prayer cloth. We'll, and it's got the healing scriptures right on it. We'll pray. I'll anoint it with oil. We'll send it to you by faith. 
and we'll believe God for your healing. Because uh, that's what they did in the early church. You heard Russ Dizdar talking about the early church, the power of the early church. Well, God wants to bless us more and more. And we're going to see more and more people born into the kingdom of God and the sick healed and the church lifted up in the spirit and the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. If you need a, uh, maybe somebody needs a blanket that are really, really sick or maybe uh, need a chemo cap to wear, you're going through chemotherapy. We'll send those to the people that need them and we'll do it for free. We'll pay the postage. We'll anoint them with oil, pray over them and send them out. Because we can do this because of you, this faithful partners of Paul Begley Prophecy, this amazing online church of believers. And they're not just believers, but they're givers. And they're focused on the harvest. And they know that it's making a difference in the lives of people all over the world, including their own life. If these broadcasts don't feed you, don't help you, don't encourage you, don't lift you, don't make you stronger, then I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. But I think they are. And I, we are seeing the evidence of it, the fruit of it, as people are coming to Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Give all the glory to the Lord. Amen. If you'd like to give today, would be a great time to do it. Help us get in the harvest. Just go to my website. Hit the easy button, as Billy Nitrain says, and just say, I want to give. I want to give today, Pastor. I want to make a difference in the lives of the kingdom of God. I want to, I want to st stand before the Lord and say, I did my part. I was, inv I was faithful. And you know what the Lord said? Jesus said, if you give, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. And I tell you, the Lord will bless you. Now, Sister Heidi's put together a great magazine. The Paul Begley Prophecy, Autumn 2017. And uh, it's a powerful, powerful 24 pages, color pages, update, articles, information, testimonies. Just an amazing information here. I tell you, you'll be blessed on all the different conferences and different aspects. The School of Prophecy, everything is in here. It'll help you know what's going on in, our, in the uh, public uh, prophecy uh, ministries. And it'll be a blessing and good teaching in there as well. Heidi puts these together. Your love gift of $20 or more. Your love gift of $20 or more. Be sure you, we have your address. We'll send this right to you right away. And it's a blessing to you. And it's a blessing, of course, to the ministry. You're helping uh, change the lives. And we're just so thankful for these that are getting saved. You might say, Pastor, can I write a check or money order or can I send it in the mail? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Put the address on the bottom of the screen the, and the moderators will put our mailing address right in the chat rooms. And those of you who are listening by radio, I'll just tell you, just right now, write us at Paul Begley Prophecy. Paul Begley Prophecy. That's 1048-B. That's 1048-B, Sagamore Parkway West. That's Sagamore Parkway West. Box 33, Box 33, Box 33, West Lafayette, Indiana. That's West Lafayette, Indiana. And the zip code is 47906. That's 479. Oh, six. Heidi really wants to get your feedback on the magazines. And so you could do that as well and uh, be a blessing to her, but encouragement. And you know, Sister Heidi's getting ready to have another hip replacement coming up in just a few days. And we really need your prayers. Um, the last time she had a hip replacement, early June, complete hip replacement. And it went flawless, no complications. Rehab went quicker. She beat. She was way ahead of schedule, and she was been touched and healed. And that hip is really working good, and she's feeling great about it. Now the other one, of course, has get has been getting worse and worse and worse all along, waiting, and she's got to have another hip replacement. And uh, I need your prayers. She needs your prayers. And we, you know, we. I, I was amazed how we were able to just keep on going. We didn't cancel any conferences. We, we just kept on going 
and, uh, and winning people to Christ. We want to make sure we got everything, all the mail shipped, everything reached. We do it the best we can, putting in a lot of extra hours to kind of cover for her because you don't realize what she does. Man, and I'm going to need a little prayer to help her along as she's healing. So, you know what? We're going to do this together. So thank you for your prayers and your faithfulness in Jesus' name. Well, I hope you enjoyed Russ Dizdar today. Man, that's just a sample. That's just like an appetizer, what this guy does when he stands in the pulpit and brings the power for Word of God. It's amazing. And it's coming up this weekend. Lightning strikes the bayou. Get registered. Be there. It's going to be powerful. Powerful. Uh, it's going to be a great time of fellowship. Kevin Wilson, the Kevin Wilson band. It's just going to be amazing, folks. You don't want to miss this. L.A. Marzulli. I mean, seriously. And I, I look forward to getting with you and just, just loving on people and telling them how much we love them. And let me tell you something. I'm also going to be, Yvette, thank you. She says, thank you for lifting us all up, up, lifting all of us up Begley's. Okay. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you in Jesus name. Let me say now, the last conference of the year will be in Huntington, Indiana. Huntington, Indiana, the following Saturday, October 28th, October 28th, Huntington, Indiana, at the First Nazarene Church. I'll be speaking at 3 o'clock and 6 o'clock for an hour and a half each session. And uh, this is a, well, we did this last year. This was a great conference. And I would talk about Bible prophecy, about the current events and biblical prophecy in both sessions you will enjoy it. It'll be a great, great venue. And it's the final conference of the year. Huntington, Indiana. I hope that many of you will come. And really, let's have a great turnout to finish the year in the uh, conferences that uh, the Lord has blessed across the country. In Jesus' name. Next year, of course, we'll be in different places. Looks like we're going to be coming back to Washington State. Looks like we're coming to New Jersey. Looks like we're coming, going back to Pennsylvania. Um, we're looking real strong. Oh, Colorado Springs, Colorado, it looks like we're going to be going there. Maybe North Carolina, we're looking at it. And who knows where else, of course. So it's going to be a great, I'll be back up in Michigan. Um, wow, Florida. Uh, there'll be some coffees. So hey, it'll be a great time. All right, amen. God bless you, amen. Folks, I'm going to let you go. God bless all of you. Be blessed. I'll be back tonight live at 10 p.m. Eastern. Wow, it will be a powerful program tonight. I'll get you up to speed on everything going on. This was a great program because there was so much going on so quickly. Wow, are you serious? I'll see you guys tonight. Brock Begley produced the broadcast. Some great research from Bart Begley. And uh, let me just say, are you serious? 10 p.m. Eastern on Sunday. No, 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 no. 10 p.m. Eastern on Prime Time Live, 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 live. I have a brand new DVD entitled The Total Eclipse of the Sun. I mean, we have these great solar eclipses, the constellations in the heavens of Revelation 12, and many other signs that God gives in the last days. I have this DVD available at my website only. It's a powerful presentation of the coming of Jesus Christ and everything you need to know about his return. Get it now at my website. Available from Paul Begley, his CD, Wayfaring Stranger. I'm just a poor wayfaring stranger. Traveling through this world be Wayfaring Stranger includes the title cut plus 11 other songs. No Order yours by visiting paulbegleyprophecy.com today. A brand new DVD, Zombie Apocalypse 2. I sat down with L.A. Marzulli and got a first-hand account from Pastor Casper McLeod. This DVD deals with the demonic spirits manifesting in the world today. The zombie craze has certainly caught the eye of Hollywood and movies and TV series. But do you really know what it is? Get the DVD. It's at my website right now.
Thank you so much for watching the broadcast. I really appreciate it. And I'll tell you something. If you'd like to know more about some of our books that we've written, go to our website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. That's www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. I've even got music CDs. I actually have a couple country gospel music CDs that we recorded that I think you'll really enjoy. I have five books that I've written. This is my newest one, Jerusalem Jihad. Jerusalem Jihad. This has to do about an end time apocalyptic scenario that includes the rebuilding of the temple, also uh, the two witnesses, and uh, it's a powerful presentation, if you will, on how things are starting to come together here in the last days. So again, check out all of our books, uh, CDs, and everything else we have, and your donations are greatly appreciated at our website. God bless you, in Jesus' name.